the BBC World Series. The BBC. The BBC. Today, we're going to dive into the history and impact of one of the oldest and most influential broadcasting organizations in the world, the British Broadcasting Corporation, more commonly known as BBC. Established in the early 1920s, the BBC has not only stood the test of time, but has emerged as a cultural pillar in the UK and has shaped the way the world consumes news, entertainment, and information. Let's begin by talking about its origins. The beginning of the BBC can be traced back to a time when the concept of a public service broadcaster was beginning to gain momentum in the United Kingdom. As the British government recognized the potential of radio as a means of communication and education, it took the initiative to establish a national broadcaster. On October 18, 1922, the British Broadcasting Company was officially founded. The founding of the BBC was facilitated through a collaboration between prominent wireless manufacturers of the time and the British government. The General Post Office, or GPO, which was the regulatory authority over telecommunications in the UK, played a crucial role in licensing the BBC. This licensing allowed BBC to operate as the official national broadcaster. The first Director General of the BBC, John Reith, played a very important role in shaping the organization during its formative years. Reith, who was a Scottish engineer and businessman, had a unique vision for BBC. He believed in the concept of broadcasting as a means of public service and emphasized the BBC's responsibility to not only entertain the public, but also educate them. Under Reith's watch, the BBC took an almost high and mighty approach. He believed in keeping the programs top-notch and emphasized the importance of impartiality in broadcasting. Reith's way of doing things set the tone for the BBC and his influence stuck around for the ages. Now, less than a month after they officially launched, the BBC pulled off their first broadcast on November 14, 1922. The broadcast took place from Station 2LO, located in London. This milestone marked the beginning of regular and organized radio broadcasting in the UK. These early radio programs were diverse, ranging from news and talk shows to live music performances. The BBC quickly became more than just a broadcaster in the UK. It became a cultural institution. It stepped up as a unifying force during major national moments like World War II. When things got tough, the BBC was there, connecting people across the country through the airwaves. What set the BBC apart from the commercial broadcasters was its commitment to this idea called public service broadcasting. It wasn't just about making money for them, it was about serving the public. The BBC had a bigger mission, which was to educate, inform, and entertain the public. Apart from this, the BBC has also been instrumental in reflecting and shaping British culture through its radio and TV programs. These have become an integral part of daily life for millions over the decades. Iconic shows like Doctor Who, Faulty Towers, and East Enders, for example, have had a massive impact on British pop culture. It wouldn't be wrong to say that the BBC has managed to weave itself into the very essence of British life. At this point, you might be wondering if being of service to the public was more important to BBC than making advertising money, how exactly did they secure the funds necessary for their operations? Well, the answer lies in the fact that the BBC is financed primarily through a television license fee. Yes, the main source of funding for the BBC comes from the TV license fee paid by households in the UK that own a television or watch live television broadcasts. This fee is a legal requirement, and the revenue generated from it is used to fund the BBC's various services, including TV, radio, and online content. This is not to say that the BBC does not engage in commercial activities to generate revenue at all. They do sell programs and formats internationally, license content, and run commercial subsidiaries. BBC Studios, for example, is the commercial arm responsible for selling and distributing BBC content globally. It's important to note that the license fee system has raised some eyebrows. There have been debates over this funding model, with some arguing that the license fee is outdated and regressive. 
The rise of streaming services and digital platforms has intensified these debates, as consumers question the need for a mandatory fee when alternative ad-supported models are prevalent. But then there's also another side of this argument, with some advocating for the continuation of the fee system as a way to maintain the BBC's independence and high-quality programming. In any case, the funding and structure of the BBC undergo periodic reviews and are subject to changes, so we'll have to wait and see what the future holds in this regard. Now, let's redirect our attention to the evolution of BBC's services and talk about how BBC has expanded over the years to cover a wide range of media platforms. Its radio services, including BBC Radio 1, BBC Radio 4, and The World Service, reach a global audience. The TV arm is responsible for a range of channels that cater to audiences with different tastes and interests. And of course, we can't forget BBC News, arguably the most well-known international news service that is known to provide thorough coverage across multiple channels. The BBC has embraced the digital era as well. It has its website and the iPlayer platform that offers on-demand streaming of its shows. This commitment of BBC to innovation and adaptability has probably been a major contributor to its long-lasting success and relevance. Over the years, they've developed interactive services, podcasts, and educational resources, ensuring they remain relevant in an ever-changing media landscape. But despite its esteemed status, the BBC has not been without controversy. One of the most notable incidents occurred during the 2003 Iraq War, when the BBC faced accusations of biased reporting and being too pro-war. Then there was the Hutton Inquiry, which followed the death of weapons expert Dr. David Kelly, and raised questions about the BBC's journalistic standards and its impartiality. The fallout from this inquiry led to the resignation of the Director General Greg Dyke and a period of intense scrutiny for BBC. These political bias accusations have been a consistent challenge. The BBC, as a publicly funded institution, is expected to uphold impartiality. However, it has faced allegations from both the left and right wing. This stresses the delicate balance BBC must strike in today's polarized media landscape. Further, there has also been controversy concerning the gender pay gap at the BBC. BBC. In 2017, the organization came under fire for pay disparities between male and female employees. It was exposed that there were significant imbalances in payment structures, which prompted the BBC to take corrective measures to address gender and diversity issues within the organization. In recent years, the competition from global streaming giants and the decline of traditional TV viewing has also posed a significant challenge. These challenges that the BBC faces, both internal and external, highlight the need for continuous innovation and introspection. As the media landscape continues to evolve, BBC must navigate the complexities of funding, impartiality, and relevance to ensure its continued role as a pillar of British media and culture. So what are your thoughts on BBC? Do you see it as a symbol of cultural influence, or do you agree with the criticisms of its funding model? Comment below and tell us. We love hearing from you. Also, tell us what other companies you want us to cover, and maybe we'll make a video on that next. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more interesting content on some of your favorite companies. Also, hit that bell icon so that you're notified every time we drop a fresh video. See you next time.